You're welcome back. You're still watching Daybreak and Trusted Television. And now it's time for us to go straight into the discussion of the day. And uh, today we'll be talking, taking a look at the economy. And they say that the economic watchers say, they've said a lot, and they're saying that a strong economy is a source of national strength. And for decades now in Nigeria, the economy has been turbulent owing to non-diversification of the economy. Inflation, corruption and COVID-19 pandemic, which greatly affected many economies across the world. So in recent times, the cost of goods and services have skyrocketed, making them beyond the reach of the ordinary or let's say the average Nigerian. Consequently, families are struggling so hard to make ends meet with the harsh economic realities and it has become even more difficult with the removal of fuel subsidy owing to the deregulation of the sector. So it's creating a lot of impact and the impact of the ongoing palliatives too by the government is not effectively felt by many Nigerians, at least we talked about that earlier. And coupled with this and the current price rise of crude oil at the international market, what should be done to ease these hardships currently faced by an average Nigerian? Anyway, that's the question we'll be answering. We'll try to answer this morning as we will be discussing issues around this. So we have in the studio an economist and public affairs analyst, Obinaya Urakpa PhD. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's good to see you. Good morning. <laughs> Always a pleasure. Good morning. <laughs> so uh, I need not say a lot about what Nigerians or the average Nigerian is going through as relates to the current economic hardship we're facing in this country. And then there's this issue of palliatives being distributed. And a lot of people have said that, no, this is not enough. Um, it didn't get to me. I don't think that the government should be t talking about palliative at this point because that's not what we need. A bag of rice can hardly get by a family of five for a month. Now, there's deregulation and all of the issues have been issue. What can we make of all of this? It's a vicious cycle for everyone. Hmm. Um, we've had cause to sit here during the past government and now even post that government into this new government. Nigeria is, by October 1, will be Oh, hitting 65? Try. Okay. <laughs> oh, I was 60, mm. whatever. I think 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. Yeah. Oh, okay. 63. I think it was M.K. that said, if you spend 20 years learning how to be mad, mm. how many years will you use to practice it? Mm. Mm. Doing one thing over and over again, expecting a different result, is the definition of madness. Mm. It was the same thing in well, your view, doctor. It, 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 it's about systems and structures. If you look at the francophones, you can see mm. how one government tumbles and that one follows. Why? Mm. This content, this pundancy. Mm. As a student of literature and history, mm. as a public affairs analyst, as an observer mm. of events, I can tell you that over time, I've understood that there was a time we were colonized. Mm. And during the colonial times, there were patterns. Many of the roads and some of the structures we have today were built during the colonial times. They left legacies. Did we sustain them? What was the maintenance culture? Even the mindset that ran government then, is that what is sustaining, what we're sustaining now? You talked about corruption and so on. With a background in insurance, there's something called risk management. Human beings will be human beings. If you do not put in place systems to checkmate them, like they say, whatever, uh, whatever uh, does not get measured, uh, whatever is not monitored does not get measured. Mm. So from ab initio, you set in place parameters to make sure that if you go this way to every um, right, there's a corresponding obligation. Mm. And when you go this way, there are consequences. If you look at a country like Singapore, they had challenges the same way. If you go and read the book, from third world to first, mm. Lee Kuan Yew, mm. you will see that they had their own challenges. Mm. So how did they manage it? Who can study it? I don't need to make the mistakes of those who have gone ahead of you. And for Nigeria, there are several hundred and four local government areas. Mm. I have come here to talk about the one local government, one product initiative. Mm. Why are we where we are? 
why are we sitting on a mono product called oil, which is supposed to be a, a blessing, but it's now turning to be <laughs> a doom for us. Mm -hmm. So is this a problem, problem of leadership? Now? Leadership. When we discovered oil in Oloibri, oil, 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 and when, when there was that crisis in 1973, oil crisis in 1973, and prices of oil went up, what did we do with the resources we got? Did we build the right infrastructures? And then it's all about planning. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. If we had sat down and planned our country and said, okay, we have these different regions, then we had different regions. Mm. Now we broke into states, 12 states, and then went to 19, and of course, you know the rest of the story. If we had planned to say, okay, like the Odudua states did under Awolowo, I was okay, we're going to take the cocoa, which is led to the cocoa house. Or like M.I. Opara did in, in East Central State. And so, okay, let's have the the Agric Extension Services, let's have the, uh, the, 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 Umudike now, the University of Numudike, mm -hmm. let's have the, 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 the Agric whatever uh, uh, institutes and so on. Let's look at the resources we have in-house and then add value to them. Nigeria is number one in cassava, yam, and many of the root mm -hmm. crops. Mm -hmm. We can't even feed our own people. Right. I mean, uh, we, can, we can discuss some of those structural issues uh, as, as far as long as we want. But if we're going to stick to the topic of the economics of fuel subsidy, for instance, yeah. this was something that we planned for, at least uh, at the governmental level. The Buhari administration in the 2023 budget budgeted and made provisions for subsidy up until the month June. of June. So that was a plan. Mm because we had passed the Petroleum Industry Act last year and mm. we all understood that deregulation is the way to go, yeah. right? Government cannot continue to down subsidize. this part of subsidy because it is not financially sustainable, sustainable and it also doesn't make sense for business, right? Give me an understanding of what is wrong with the way they're going about it now. They being the government and the, and the powers that be in the sector, for instance, with regards to managing the commonwealth of the people. I think the, the, if we must tell ourselves the truth, the Yorubas will tell you that when two siblings walk into a room and come out smiling, they have lied to each other. Mm. What I suspect is that at the point of reading that speech on May 29, mm. either out of euphoria mm. or whether it was planned, and the president read that sentence, subsidy is gone. And labor came out to say, hey, mm. Did we discuss this? <laughs> there are three things you must do in management, in leadership. You must do stakeholders mapping. Mm. Next one is stakeholders engagement. Just like you can engage a lady and put a ring in her mm. finger and plan towards marriage. Mm. A lot of discussions will go in before you finally arrive at the point of final marriage. Mm. Then after you've done that, there's what you call stakeholders management. Up until now, we're still having discussions with labor. Threats of strike and stalemates, mm. deadlocks. Some of these discussions should have been had before announcement of removal of subsidy. So did you think that um, Labour could have acted after the statement, subsidy is gone? They shouldn't have even got into this space at all? If, if, if bringing Labour into this discussion now, yes, that's like medicine after death because it was announced on May 29. And like he rightly said, we, were very, we discussed it on this platform. And we were the ones that championed and said, let the former government just go and allow this government to handle the issue of removal of subsidy. And then, to be fair to the former government, it was put in the budget that up until June. So what was the rush in announcing on May 29 when you had a whole month to plan? Mm -hmm. That's the argument Labour is making. Mm -hmm. And then planning involved, talking about specifics, mm -hmm. involved agreeing, so okay, do we bring in buses? Do we bring in the CNG? Do we reconfigure people's cars to move from fuel? My sister, do you know the implication? Mm -hmm. You moved from 187 naira, or is it 197 naira per liter, mm -hmm. to 540 naira mm -hmm. per liter. Mm -hmm. As much as there's the logic to say, okay, we were losing over 6 trillion on subsidy, which is not sustainable, mm -hmm. we all agreed that this was not sustainable. We didn't even know who was doing this subsidy. Mm -hmm. I travel on the West Coast, mm -hmm. I, I visit different countries. I know that our borders, we have over 1,000 entry points into Nigeria that are unmanned. Mm -hmm. So a lot of smuggling, so you bring in 100 million liters, and then we, the question is how much do we even consume? But we know all of that. We, we don't consume more than over six, about 60 million. Mm -hmm. So what, where does the other 40 million go to? Free that towards Niger, mm -hmm. Chad, uh, West Coast. Mm -hmm. If you go to um, the, the, the uh, Benin Republic now and, and Togo, you find out that 
There's yeah. so much mi the misery also because that point. yeah, there's so yeah. much misery because yeah. they were used to we sell cheap here and someone takes it across the border. So we understand that yeah. there's nobody that does not understand it, unless the person is even yeah. the yeah. so-called illiterate yeah. understand what these issues are. Yeah. What we had a challenge with was the process of implementation, yeah. now, which has always been the issue in this country. Yeah. Why was a rush? Yeah. And then if to, to the extent that it has been announced, someone told me that once the president makes a proclamation, yeah. even if it was is is stand to have been a mistake. The, the, the aides of the president quickly rush into a room and see how to quickly streamline right. this statement made by the president because this is the commander-in-chief, the authority figure. Mm. When he sneezes, the country catches cold. The finance in sector is affected. Every sector is affected. So when a president makes a pronouncement, even if it's a mistake, every person that is an aide, that's why you have special advisors, mm. uh, uh, ministers, and so on, gets into a room and start planning, start engaging. Labor told you that after the first one that the president invited and said, guys, calm down, it took six weeks and they didn't hear much. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, it's safe to say that from the explanation we got, uh, this whole subsidy removal thing was supposed to be part of a 100 days plan. And it was somewhat uh, impulsive, so to say, not say impulsive, but you know, it was, uh, <laughs> you know, it was the president's uh, prerogative anyway uh, to make that pronouncement on uh, his inauguration day. But give me your take on I mean, three months on, right? Do you see room for us to course correct as far as the implementation of subsidy removal is concerned? Because now the big question is, uh, we understand marketers are saying, listen, market forces will always be market forces. Mm -hmm. uh, and as, as far as the dollar is central to the importation of, uh, of, of PMS as a product, uh, we understand how terribly many current currencies are doing against the dollar, the performance against the dollar, and the Naira is one of those uh, currencies that is not uh, holding its own against the dollar. And the, 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 the feelers are that the prices could go as high as maybe even a thousand Naira before the end of the year, mm -hmm. right? But we also have the government pushing back and saying, listen, let's just stick to the 620 or 619 Naira uh, per liter for now. And for most people, it doesn't make a lot of sense. If you don't have that, um, powers anymore even constitutionally to now control the price or to subsidize what gives you the impetus to say you can still control the price and if you can't control the price why is it as high as 620 naira per liter why not bring it down to 400 why not bring it down to 300 why not even bring it down to 200 now as many nigerians have uh, have pleaded to the government to what, what 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 do you make of the conundrum around the idea of subsidy removal and uh, what's going on right now in the country? What we have is, <laughs> I'm choosing my words carefully. Mm -hmm. If you say you remove subsidy, at, at what point do we now say price should stay at 617? Mm -hmm. It shouldn't go up again. Mm -hmm. That means market forces are not at play anymore. Mm -hmm. So leave the market forces. As simple as what I said earlier, mm -hmm. we need to sit down and plan this and have a town hall meeting. Mm -hmm. You have the private sector, you have different women groups, youths and so on. You would have gotten ideas on how to, you have economists in this country, you have people in different sectors, you have Nigerian Economic Summit group that has come, go, to, gone to visit mm -hmm. and so on. If you had sat down and we agreed on how to proceed with this, if you had sat down to talk about refineries, what I see is a lot of reactionary movements, internal responses. If we had put, in, we have how many refineries, at least three and maybe an mm. extra one, mm. refineries. The Portacourt one, we've been told, will come on stream on, in December. December. The Dangote one, which we shouldn't even be discussing because it's a private initiative. Mm. Nobody has explained to us if there's I mean, a government investment. It has right? missed two deadlines already. Yeah. 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 Deadlines. Yeah. We're not talking about 2025. Yeah. So whatever you had in mind, uh, why should we even rely on Dangote? Which, uh, so we also rely on Dangote for salt, sugar, mm. and mm. so on. He's a private person. We should fix ourselves. Mm -hmm. So you have the Kaduna refinery, you have the Wari refinery, mm -hmm. you have the Portacot refinery. Mm -hmm. As simple as go, just fix one of them so that you, uh, you are in seven habits of highly effective mm -hmm. people by mm -hmm. Stephen Covey. Mm -hmm. There's what you call sphere of influence and sphere of concern. Mm -hmm. Anything outside this circle is your sphere of concern. You don't have control over it. You don't have control over dollar, but you have control over what can help Nigeria, the Nigerian currencies be strengthened to the dollar. Mm. And it's as simple as what, what I began to say. If you are more productive than consumptive, you're likely to now have a strong currency if you export more. If you look at NEPC, NEPC mm. says export for survival. Yeah. Meaning that they understand that the more you export, the more foreign exchange you earn, 
And the more you engage the private sector, the more, for instance, look at what you're wearing, look at what you're wearing. I've just, someone asked me, do you know the economy of Hajj? Mm. If every person that went on Hajj this year wore what you, you, you're wearing mm. and went with extra 10 pieces, mm. if you get the heart of Nigerians and they are committed to exporting, mm. Then and bring back that money, which is what NEPC is preaching. By the yeah. time you export, you should you repatriate the dollar so that yeah. we can have, uh, have uh, foreign exchange yeah. in our reserves. Yeah. As I speak, we don't even have enough dollars in the central bank. Yeah. So if I needed to produce something, if I decide to say, okay, I will not be part of the 5% of the 220 million Nigerians yeah. that are, waiting, are working for government. I want to become an entrepreneur, which I am. I want to create and employ people. If I employ five persons, so you employ five, she employs five, we will help this government reduce unemployment. And that strengthens the, the country and reduces the misery index of Nigerians, and they will work with you. What has happened is that we are just drawn apart in different, but, different but places. Doctor, what do you say to people who say, this is a necessary evil, the suffering, the disruption that no. is going on right now, no. uh, if we're trying to move away, that the federal government or the president does not have a magic wand that can make our refineries function overnight and that some of these systems and processes and procedures to move away from them that within this period of transition that is why all of these difficulties are being experienced i think the president in a special address to the nation asked nigerians for patience for sacrifice and things like that and that is what he's alluding to do you also think that these are just part of the shocks that happen when you're tra trying to transition from one system to another no, sir. Uh, Mr. President is a private sector player. He's one of us. Mr. President ran Lagos. Mr. President is at the national level. I understand the challenges of starting a new experience, which is national. Lagos is not Abuja. Abuja is 36 states plus FCT 37. Lagos was 20 local government areas if you added the LCDS 52. This is national. Nigeria is huge. How long are we going to be patient? And if Nigerians are very intelligent people, if they see that there are alternatives to whatever you're offering them, they'll ask you questions. Yeah. We're very intelligent people. Yeah. You campaigned to them, and you got them convinced to vote for you. So how long are they going to be patient when they see that there are some things you can do in a week and achieve results? I'm not saying this can happen in three months, but what I'm saying is that singular statement took us into a tailspin. Yeah. That's where we are, if the truth be told. Mm. And now that it has happened, how do we rally Nigerians together? That's what the president is asking for. Mm. And we are ready to work with him. We are ready to join forces with him. But as I speak, we also need to ask questions. The attitude of the persons who are in government, the number of cars in convoys, mm. my full tank is how much? Chasing 40, 50,000. Mm. Then when you have close to 100 cars, Going to the airport to go and receive the president. I, have a, I was at, at Wonderland at airport mm. and I saw the last time the president came back from India. And as I, someone counted over 100 cars coming back from the airport. Okay. Not necessarily the president's convoy, yeah. but almost every MDA wanted to go and show their face and greet. Are we still at that level? Yeah. We have passed the level where we filter things. There are two ways you make money. Either you increase your volume of production, which talks Except about cost. even the oil, yeah. or you yeah. reduce your cost of production. It's yeah. called operations management. Yeah. We have enough people who can, who so can, you're, who can you're give saying, that you're, wisdom. You're saying we're running the government as if we're, we're, uh, we're living okay. in good times. No, we're not in good times. Yeah. Just people barely feed. Mm. Transportation, for you to come out from Lube, let me give an example of where mm. I know. 200 naira from the FHA Lube to the junction, I was asking a young man who earns 15,000 at the petrol station where I was buying mm. fuel. 200 naira to come out to the junction, and from the junction in Lube, which is just by short price, to NMPC junction, mm. 500 naira, I couldn't believe my ears. So how much does he earn? Then I asked, how do you survive? And the guy said, sir, mm. I make clothes. So this petrol station gives me access to people, and then I, I, I now make clothes for them. I said, this is the guy that is reasoning. So that brings me to the other point. If you engaged and you talked to the entrepreneurs in this country, they would have been able, what I'm wearing was made in Enugu by a young man who doesn't work for government. And all he did was, he measured me. I went for a training in Enugu. He took my measurements. He had his tape in his pocket. So have we taught our people the wisdom to learn how to create multiple streams of income so that they don't bear down on you. But now, for that young man that is making clothes for me, mm. he needs to transport it from Enugu for me to pick it up in Jabi near your office here. Yeah. So and that's transportation. Yeah. Now, the full cost has made, made uh, ensured that if he was making this clothes for 10,000, the transportation from Enugu to, to Abuja here ensures that the young man has increased, it, it will have increased his cost of production mm. and his pricing. So he now charges me an extra 5,000 yeah, for transport. Uh, but, but doctor, just before Omar Dia jumps in, you did talk about the sphere of influence, right? A sphere of concern. Yeah. Um, if, if, we, if we're going to talk about that uh, in practical terms with regards to what the administration is dealing with right yeah. now, it can 
influence policy. It can influence legislation, for yeah. instance. It can even influence uh, the regulatory bodies within the system, right? Yeah. But at the crux, the crux of the matter is we still use dollars to buy the PMS we import. Yeah. And as far as the exchange rate is concerned, um, I don't think there's much <laughs> we, we can do about it. And, and for most people, that is at the heart of the problem. The fact that we don't have the local refining capacity that will be able to meet the, the local demands. That means we are still at the mercy of the international market, for instance, and, and the pricing uh, there, because we can't determine how much they sell PMS at the international market, for instance. So how long do you see this quagmire lasting before the Tinubu administration gets a, a grip of it, especially with all the timelines around the local uh, Portacote refinery coming upstream by December, if, you know, that timeline does actually uh, come through. How long do you see the government stabilizing this particular issue? Because the marketers are saying, listen, if we buy it higher, there's no way you're going to make us sell it at any lower price, except if you're going to subsidize it. <laughs> Did the marketers also tell you that they have some money still trapped Oh, they did. They tell you. They did. They've Thank all, you. So I was standing, they've been outspoken uh, standing, about yeah. that. Okay. Yes. Did they also tell you that they borrowed money to buy the products that they are being owed for? Mm. My brother, let's tell you the mm. truth. Mm. You want the truth? Mm. You've seen the airlines one. You've seen the story about Dubai. So we'll clap for the president mm. for talking to the Dubai thing. But did you hear the other uh, the, 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 the the narrative the story, that came out from Yes. That? Can we tell ourselves the truth? Mm. This is me being fair. I, I hope you're saying there's passports. Doctor, you're saying there's no reason to be optimistic. I'm not saying there's no reason to be optimistic, but my you, you don't you, sound optimistic, to be honest. No, I, I, I'm a very, I'm a realist. Mm. If I wasn't a realist, my brother, I won't be sitting with you here. We're in Canada. Mm. Right. If I listen to my wife and a mm. few people, I won't be sitting with you in this place. Right. My boys are all located to mm. Canada and mm. UK and so mm. on. I'm talking about people whose shops were demolished in UTC. They've mm. located to Canada, mm. sold off village lands and everything. I can sell my father's land and look at Canada. So mm. if I wasn't optimistic, I won't be here. There is, see, eh, the dog said that those who have yam don't know how to eat it because he sees the goat wasting it. I see the opportunities in this land. That's why I'm still here. So let me tell you the sphere of influence. Mm. The sphere of influencer is the kind of thing that Dele Alake is doing in Ministry of Solid Minerals. I had cost to train their staff and they told me that over 90% of Ajokuta was ready as of three years ago, 2019. Mm. Um, so you want facts? Ajokuta, if you get Ajokuta right, any country that wants to industrialize must have steel or must have access to steel. Mm. And when you have steel, it, 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 that's fabrication mm. and that's work for people. They, then go back to housing. The average bungalow can give you 30 jobs. Mm. Iron benders, construction. <laughs> mason, the roof, the POP, that's jobs. But Canada just announced that they want your masons, they want your plumbers and so on. And many of them are getting trade certificates and living. You will soon start looking mm. for mm. POP people. <laughs> In the first place, you, want, you didn't even have them. Mm. They were coming from Togo and, and Benepoli. What did Togo do? Go and look at the Songhai concepts by Faranzamujo. Uh, and when they got to, uh, to, 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 to uh, Port Novo, yeah. they gave him land, yeah. gave him an enabling environment. I'm happy that our sister has been reappointed as SA on um, PBEC. Yeah. If Nigeria was over, over 100 and something on the, on, the, on the index, but we've gone to at least 100 and yeah. we're trying to come down to below 100. Yeah. There are implications for that. So there are things we have control over. Sir, deal with security. That was the discussion we were having before I came into the studios. Mm. Mm. To the extent that farmers cannot go into the farm and harvest the, pot the pot Irish potatoes in Bocos mm. and get the yam in Jalingo and get me the palm oil, uh, the, the palm oil in, in, in Ugev and that mm. area. Mm. To the extent that they cannot move it except to move at night. I saw planting and palm oil. Mm. Go and move in the daytime and see what happens to you. And see the level of extortion of, by security agencies. Mm. Doctor, if you don't move at night, how do you sell? And if I don't sell, how do I pay my staff? If I don't pay my staff, I leave the country. Doctor, mm. we know that optimistic? all of these problems are glaring and we cannot see. You don't need to tell a blind man. We have solutions, man. We have problems. Minister of country. Agriculture, man, should give... Now, give inputs to farmers. I just came out from Lafia. I served in Doma, local government area, like two years ago. And I told them my story of Doma. I used to buy here, I'm six naira, 12, eight naira, 12 naira. Every Wednesday in Doma, local government, I'm calling you, I'm giving you facts and figures. So that if you want to get into it, you get into it. If the, if the government can go and investigate what I'm saying, if any of them is a lie, come and arrest me. Mm -hmm. Go to Doma, as far back as 1991, when I went for youth service. Every Wednesday, 9-11 cars come to move yams from Doma. The economy of Doma was growing. But as I speak to you today, headsmen are sitting in the lower Benuel authority. Mm -hmm. I have the facts. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, the, 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 this the administration mm -hmm. 
have you know put out plans they've brought up policies let's just say since the removal of your subsidy or yeah. the statement for subsidy is gone yeah. and uh, recently we saw the palliatives that have been distributed uh, which of course a lot of people have said that you know that's not the way to go and there are other policies as well which um, the ministers are trying to implement and all the um, you know appointed personnel by the uh, president how would you rate all of these actions of the government actors trying to alleviate poverty or trying to reduce the effect of the economic hardship on the ordinary Nigerians you don't alleviate poverty I understand semantics more firms, phonemes, syntax, mm -hmm. level of sentence, mm -hmm. semantics, level of mm -hmm. meaning. You don't alleviate poverty, just like I don't believe in job creation. Mm -hmm. You should do wealth creation, sir. Your grandmother had a backyard. In business school, we were taught that in a developing economy, everybody should have at least seven streams of income. The only people who have satisfied this is your grandmother and your grandfather. Mm -hmm. we have, that's why I dress the way I dress. I'm mm -hmm. deeply cultural. Mm -hmm. And what do I mean? At the backyard of your grandmother, you had Ogo. You had cabbage, you had lettuce, you had chicken, you had guava. Your grandmother did wealth creation. And in Ibo land, there are four market days, a K, Ori, and Kwa Afo. You go to the big market, AK, and you buy big things and you sell in the smaller markets. They had enough native intelligence to run their economy. How did we run government before the white man came? Now that we have even gone to pack all the degrees, what is it counting for? So, straight up, let me explain to you there's nothing like palliatives. Okay, let to, to prove it to you. The president himself, being a, a market-driven person, mm. what did he say? He just suspend this sharing of because what is eight thousand naira? But we did the mathematics, yeah. sir. Yeah. And we did the mathematics and found out that if you divided five hundred billion by seven hundred and seventy four local government areas, yeah, and then you, you find out that you have about fifteen thousand persons that will get that eight thousand. If you formed them into a cooperative, you have over a hundred million in one pool. With that, sir, you can buy up all the potatoes in Bokos mm. and bring to Abuja. And as you're leaving the studios here, yeah, you have mm. a bag of potatoes and it will be cheaper than Otako market, market price. Mm. The farmer that is in Bokos has made money. You that is here, you have reduced your food budget by over 30%. Am I communicating? That's mm. optimism now. Mm. This is fair of influence now. Mm. This we have control over. If the, if the more you do all of that, let me tell you, over 40 to 50% of the production of farmers in Nigeria goes bad between the farm and the table. It's been there since 2004. So Even what, the food and agriculture organization recognizes doing? it. What are we mm. doing? Those are the losses and so on. Avoidable things. Now you have farming season. Where are the inputs? The dollar rate is going up. Mm. And we're still depending. You have Proda in Enugu. You have IITA. You have all of the areas around the southwest that can fabricate things for you. Even private persons are fabricating things. They ha the harrowers, the harvesters, and so on. But we're still importing from China, including toothpick. Right. Okay. Uh, doctor, for, 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 for this particular administration now, right? Uh, it's just three months, some days old, mm -hmm. and we're seeing some of the reforms the president is trying to put in place. Um, have you seen anything that, um, obviously, you, you talk about Delhi Alakes Ministry of Steel. Um, with the plan that came up. With, with, the the roadmap. with the plan, with the roadmap, right? And you know of the president's private sector mindset, mindset. so to say. Yes. You've seen the kind of deliverables on the international in the international community in terms of his relationship yeah. uh, and how he's leveraging on that with the UAE negotiations Smart. and how that according to his uh, spokesperson is going to bring about an enhanced business relationship between mm. uh, the two countries mm. uh, give me your thoughts on w what you think about time as a factor for the Tinubu administration because what you're talking about uh, sincerely is decades and decades of mismanagement on the performance from one administration to another that has led us to this particular point, right? Yeah. Do you see the Tinubu administration potentially course correcting to a point where, as, as we all know, one sure way to get out of poverty is for people to have jobs, that we can stimulate the economy to a point where this would look like one bad dream and when we eventually wake up we will be happy that uh, you know it was just a bad dream uh, after all yeah i actually trust that um the very first thing he did was to atten attend an economic summit in france mm. and the one he, he attended in india also mm. you saw the engagements mm. there 
Uh, even the appointment of Ajurin Gelale mm. is exciting mm -hmm. to me because we know his antecedents mm -hmm. and even the communication. Mm -hmm. the, the, the narrative mm -hmm. is sweet to listen to, mm -hmm. not, not like what we saw mm -hmm. before. There's no combating. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go into mm -hmm. Akasana's passions. Mm -hmm. So a few steps have been made right. Mm -hmm. And talking about the mindset, I do not expect anything less from a, a President Bola Ahmed Tinubu mm -hmm. who ran Lagos. If you mm -hmm. can run Lagos, mm -hmm. <laughs> You can run if mm -hmm. it's like running a company. Some say running Lagos is not that difficult with all the economic advantages. <laughs> My brother, if, if, if they give uh, the Yorubas will tell you that if you put soup in a granola shell, mm -hmm. the person that will, be, that will be filled will still be filled. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't have leadership skills, if they give you Lagos, you run it down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what would you say about he had bringing a people? Skill. They had a good skill in recruiting the professor, uh, Shiba and Jose, while they do. Mm. So if they are the ones we are seeing at the national level, and I saw a poster yesterday that showed that some of those commissioners in Lagos then, mm. uh, Yemika Doso was a yeah. commissioner. Exactly. Was a commissioner. Exactly. Wale was yeah. a commissioner. Right. Uh, uh, Shiba and Jose, whom he sent up yeah. here, was a commissioner. So if yeah. he had that uh, ability to recruit, yeah. and we have seen some of the ministers, uh, yes, we have a few issues with some of the people yeah. that were named ministers, but not everybody. Okazi mm. is the ones mm. you swallow, the ones mm. you chew. Mm. We understand that part. Mm. So the ones who can help to hold the government down, we're expecting a lot from Wale, Wale Edu. Mm. We, we need Wale Edu to go and look at that single, uh, single, uh, single window mm. on the dollar uh, thing mm. and so mm. on. And even availability of the forest, forest so that people don't get to the bank based on what you promised them mm. and they cannot get it from the bank and they still have to go to the, the private market to go and access. And to mm. the extent they go to the private market, dollar will keep going up. Because what is happening now is that there isn't enough supply and then demand, the is, demand is pushing the high, price right, up. Right. Simple economics. So what and I, I expect and, and is what do you make production? of the demands? Are they reasonable demands? Because um, the CBN likes us to believe that, especially on the importers and exporters window, window, they prioritize who gets what. And why do you need the dollar? And you know, in that order of priority, you can get it. Do you think that when it comes to prioritizing access to the dollar, especially for business, for commerce, yeah. do you think that we're getting it right? Because a lot of people think that the politicians have infiltrated the CBM for so long that they're the ones who have access to it and they are the ones channeling all the funds, all the dollars to the BDCs so that they can make a quick buck. Is there anything that the politicians have not, have not sold? Mm. Even in the past government, by the time you did the, the intervention funds, didn't you hear the stories of politicians who drew up lists and found a way to get it for, to use for campaigns? Mm. That's why I talked about risk management and putting in place systems and structures to checkmate them. My only pain is that even we, the followers in Nigeria, are also culpable. Mm. To the extent that you get compromised, you can see all the investigations going on mm. and so on. You get compromised and then you, you, you should change the rest of us. Mm. If, for instance, you, you prioritize and you give it to manufacturers to produce and employ more people, you reduce the pressure on this government. Mm. And if the government herself can sit down with labor, can sit down with the private sector and discuss, I, I see what they're discussing with NIPCO and if you're to, how do we reconfigure the cars so that we, we reduce dependence on this oil? The next one is how do we revive re refineries? Mm. And then if reviving these refineries, which are big hegemots, mm. who, who, which technology may have become outdated, because mm. I actually suspect that many, many of them are big. If you look at the phone you're carrying, in those days you used to have mainframe computers. So if you have a right. computer in your pocket now, we mm. should also think about modular refineries. Mm. Now, instead of destroying some of the oils, uh, the, uh, the oil that we capture with people who have uh, done oil bunkering, if we did, if we had a way to license modular refineries at, and so on, just like the mining people have come up with the roadmap, license artisanal miners mm. so that they don't mine our gold illegally and, 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 and fly them out, mm. then deal with banditry and kidnapping and all of the security issues so that people move freely, freedom of movement and so on. Mm. Look at the ECOWAS protocol, allow our people to move freely into ECOWAS. Mm which was what we discussed here some time ago, closing mm. the borders didn't solve it. Mm. So if what time we produce, I just came back from Ghana. Mm. Ghana has 30 million persons. Mm. Nigerians in Ghana are over 2 million. Mm. I'm supposed to return there to mm. engage with them. Mm. I met the, the high commissioner, mm. Etai Bas. Mm. He probably, probably may be listening now. Mm. Okay, Etai Bas, the former chief of Navasa, he's the high commissioner in Ghana. And he, we sat down and discussed it. He said, there are over 2 million Nigerians in Ghana. What is Ali Adi doing? So we're supposed to go engage with them, teach them entrepreneurship. In Nigeria, if you engage the business development service providers, go to Smedan. There is a, a model for business development service providers so that you mm. can have people do business plans. You can have people know how to create wealth based on their environment. Then you provide financing to mm. them. There are three challenges every MSME face, faces. One is access to ideas, being able to discuss what you're discussing. So don't ever think you're wasting your time here. People are watching us as we speak. Mm. They are picking up ideas and they're running with it. Mm. So this is your own cre wealth creation. Number two is access to finance. Mm. Being able to get the finance to fund the ideas that you have come up with or you have been trained to come up with. Right. The number three is access to markets. To the extent that our people produce and cannot bring it out from the hinterland. Then you talk about works. 
Fashola did the much he could, open the second Niger Bridge. The East West Road is being constructed, the other ones, the rail, then transport, the railroads. You can see what Lagos has done with the, the red and the blue line. Yeah. Open up the whole places. What is China using to gap up for God's God sake? When did China even start this thing we are clapping? When did Dubai even start? That we are going to have meetings with them. Some of these people used to come in. When did Malaysia even start coming to pick palm Canada here? Now, as I speak, there are over, we have over 600,000 metric tons deficit of palm oil. Mm -hmm. That if I want to do soap making now and make money from so I don't disturb it to give me a job. Mm -hmm. I need to get palm oil to produce soap so that people can buy. But we keep importing everything. But yeah, that's you see a lot of things yeah. that you've talked about right now surrounds, you know, the insecurity and most of the places that you've mentioned and the achievements of uh, President Bola Tinubu in the last, uh, let's Almost. say, less than, a, less than four months right now, it's, it's been downplayed by insecurity. We've also seen that he has taken steps by changing the service chiefs and, you know, some other people that he has put in strategic places and the governors trying to work together with him. Do you think that this move by the president can actually solve the problem of insecurity to an extent? Yes, it, it can. However, you do you want the truth? Mm. Of course, we, we want, want the, the truth. truth. How long have we been on this insecurity mm. thing? Mm. I think the president has to do what he did before he traveled to India. Mm. Lock these service chiefs into the room and have eyeball to eyeball with them and say, how long are we going to deal with the security issue? Mm. I hope we're not dealing with a military complex here. Mm. America has had to deal with it. Whenever you hear that there's almost every American president fights a war because there's a military complex that ensures that one missile is over a million dollars. So let there be a war so that money is made from that. I'm being careful how I choose my words. The president needs to, he doesn't need to involve us in it. Sit down with these guys and say, guys, I hope there are no fifth columnists within the military that are making profit from this misery called insecurity. Are we really solving it? And then we also need to engage the military as in what do you need to solve this thing and within which time frame? Mm. We cannot be on this same bandit rhythm forever. So what but would I mean, you say you're, now? You're smart enough, Doctor, to know that the kinetic approach is not the only approach. It's not the only approach. Hmm. Uh, because I was with Dan Bazao right. at, the AP, uh, at the policy dialogue in 2015 before the last government. Mm. I was mm. there. I was one of the rapporteurs. I was invited to be one of the rapporteurs at the APC policy dialogue. Mm. And while I sat down and watched Dan Bazao. He said the, the world has gone beyond the, 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 the security of borders to the security of persons. Mm. If you get the average Nigerian, like you have vigilantes, you saw mm. how vigilantes picked up people who were doing kidnapping in Anambra mm. and a few places and so on. Mm. If you get the people involved in this government, if, mm. if the misery index can drop, if the people see that will that you are on their side, but now what's happening is that the pe people are, you know the Maslow's hierarchy of need, people are at that base level where they're just basically trying to survive. Yeah, exactly. And at that point, anybody gives them anything yeah. they will take. Yeah, I mean, I think the president alluded to that uh, during the campaign. He says, uh, Boko Haram and the Nigerian government are competing in terms of recruiting jobless, mm. uh, you know, uh, Nigerians who are poor and who are having to deal with this very uh, difficult decision to make, whether to live uh, honorably or to join uh, the criminal underworld to, uh, to to make ends meet because that's what some of these uh, kidnappers are telling us about. And that's why you mentioned the Abado thing. It's a gift to them, recruit them. And get, what, uh, that, forget the joke around yeah, it. Right. What he meant, really, which I think I'm not holding, mm. uh, holding forth for him, mm. is that agriculture is the low hanging fruit. Right. Are you getting what I'm saying? If you get those youths to go and take 100 hectares of land, I'll give you an example of coconut. If you plant one coconut in this Kuji, where we, we in FCT are supposed to be farming in Kuji. Mm. But now we have allowed politicians to convert some of the lands there to, re, to residential mm. apartments. Estates. Yeah. Yeah. We've not even used up the 25% of the land we're supposed to use in Kuji. Some people are holding the land. And I hope the new FCT minister will go and review Kuji land mm. ownership and who's holding it. Mm. Because, sir, that I'm land. I'm sure the people in Kuji will not appreciate you bringing <laughs> it up. <but laughs> that land is supposed to be for agriculture. Right. Mm. If you farm in Kuji, then you can feed Amak. Mm. Sir, if you plant one coconut tree, it can give you like 100 pots. I just got that yeah. information. If you plant 100 of them on a one hectare land, mm. you, you know how many people you employ? That is what I actually think the president was talking about. Uh, give them abado. Abado right. is what means they right. will feed well and they can farm well. Right. Where is the Minister of Agriculture he has appointed? Can he go and implement the campaign promise of abado? Mm. Mm. Yeah, okay. Ooh, ooh. Uh, so yeah. I, I say <laughs> that to, to make the point around how, um, you know, this administration now, obviously, the stakes 
maybe high economically speaking not maybe he's definitely high economically speaking even though politically because of his low uh, victory margin you get a sense that um, you know not many people expect a lot from him because a lot more Nigerians didn't actually want him to be president because they were voting the one of the two other uh, candidates that came uh, second and third but on on the flip side if you take a look at uh, the budget for the year 2023 right uh, the projection was 1.6 million barrels per day. Mm. Definitely, we're not meeting that quota. I think the last time I checked, there was it was around 1.2 uh, million barrels per day. But the benchmark also was at $75 a barrel. Now the brand crude is selling at 90, 94, 94 95 said, yes, barrels today. per day. Uh, and just brings back the conversation of the excess crude account. I remember that conversation mm. with Ngoji Okonze back governors. in 2012. And the governor <laughs> said, listen, uh, there's no rainy day. <laughs> this is, give us, give us now. Yeah. Um, so w what do you make of what, what the administration needs to do about physical resp fiscal responsibility? Because in the news this morning, we were reading about how Sislak is saying, listen, the, the, the debt ceiling, the Tinubu administration is even going above and beyond uh, acting as if we don't have this national debt burden to deal with what does the administration need to do especially uh, because this looks like a, a silver lining with the whole crude oil thing uh, i mean we're complaining internally about the price of pms but we're happy also that the price of crude is going up because that means nigeria is making more money are you not happy that the, the price of crude is going up no it's double jeopardy yeah as long as you're not producing yours mm. and refining is double jeopardy. You know what fella said? Mm. Double wahala for dead body. Mm. Sir, you export cheap crude and you import um, refined mm. at the, that dollar exchange mm. rate. That's what the marketers are telling you. Mm. You're, not make, you're not benefiting from that. And that's why NMPC said they are under, doing under recovery. Mm. NMPC at the point is even expecting the government to pay. pay they, haven't you heard it? Mm. NMPC said we're owing them. Mm. It's not NMPC that's supposed to be paying into the revenue account. Mm. They have not remitted for They've some time. They have not remitted now. for some time. So, sir, can we tell ourselves the truth? We are not small boys and but small girls. Make it, make it make sense for Nigerians yeah. who don't understand what you just said right now and which has been the reality for quite some time. Make I, it make I, sense why we're producing millions and millions of barrels every day, but seemingly the money we're making is not even enough to reflect in the Federation account. Okay, to the Nigerian that he said I should explain <laughs> it to no technicalities. <laughs> it's a simple matter. Mm. You have cassava. Mm. From your backyard you choose to take the cassava harvest cassava and go and sell in the open market and then you now buy gary can i make it that mm -hmm. you now buy gary you know that buying gary in cups is actually going to be more expensive than selling raw cassava mm. is it not better that you either you hire extra hands or you take all the children you have and you peel the cassava press, process it in the house fry it and produce your own gare. If you notice, most people who do that have more gare in the compound mm. than the people who buy in the buy. market. Mm. In our culture, if they catch you as a woman going to buy gare in mm. the market, mm. you are looked upon as a very funny person. Mm. Wow. You don't like your husband. Mm. You want your husband to be a poor person. Mm. Your fellow women insulted you. Mm. So as simple as that example of you plant cassava in the land you already have, your father's land, mm. and you harvest the cassava, peel it, and spend the time. You pay the price of the smell of cassava. Mm. Apple. Mm. And then you produce gari. So that rather than going to buy gari in the market, mm. you actually sell gari. The mm. more gari, you can eat some of the gari mm, and sell some of it so that you mm. make more money. Your family mm. is more robust. You can take more chief tester titles. Forgive me. For mm. those who want to marry mm. more wives, right. you, you can, mm. the women can wear more mm. clothes. Uh, you mm. can send your children mm. to better schools. Mm. I'm just using that common sense. You decide mm. to break it down. Mm. Okay. Sir, what Nigeria is doing is the cassava, which is our crude oil, we are sending it. Incidentally, we can actually mm. get ethanol from cassava. Mm. We're not supposed to mm. just be consuming this mm. cassava. Brazil has over 10% of, uh, of et uh, ethanol from cassava. So mm. let's not even go into residues. Mm. Mm. But what we're doing is that we're carrying our cassava this time around crude oil. In its and we're giving it mm. And we're giving it to somebody somewhere mm. who is processing it for us. And then we now pay for shipping to bring our own oil mm. back in refined format. And then when it's coming, we now come and we pay for all the issue of demolish at the ports mm. and all of the tank farms and everything. And the marketers have to come to Silesia and then start moving it here. When you could easily have paid the price and say, okay, this time we are going to focus on re revitalizing mm. the refineries. Mm. And we we'll do Kaduna, sir, 
Kaduna is two, two and a half hours from here. Once you finish, the same marketers, instead of sitting in Sulejah here, would have just used the same tanker and bring it here and flood the filling stations here. The ones that are going to Kaduna can yeah, also. But, but we also understand that um, the, the, the data doesn't support uh, full domestic uh, coverage for even if our all four refineries are uh, running at full capacity, they, they won't be able to service our domestic uh, demands. Okay. My name is Obi Naya mm. Chinazoku Rabba. Quote mm. me anywhere. Let mm. them set up a meeting. Let's engage. Mm. It's a lie. What, what do you mean it's a, it's a lie? Okay, what is the population of Nigerians? Do you have the data mm. too of mm. consumption in Nigeria? I mm. mentioned it mm. before. That they say we are consuming 100 million. Mm. Okay. Have you noticed that since this uh, in, uh, removal of subsidy. The numbers come Consumption down. Consumption has yeah. come down. Yeah. Okay, it's data. Yeah. Data does but, not but lie. Also, but also, we alluded to, as you pointed out earlier, that uh, some of the product is being smuggled out of the country. So, block, uh, so yeah. deal with the issue of customs and immigration. You've changed the, the persons mm. in charge of that place. Mm. Give them a marching order to go and block the borders. The, on the issue of Niger, they need to block the border. Mm. See, what to do is not hard. Mm. Let's tell ourselves the truth. It's Nigeria we're dealing with here. So, I think I trust that the president should be able to. He has appointed more ministers than we expected him to appoint, which is a different topic we shouldn't mm. even go into. Mm. Now, we have a lot of people. We still had two new ministers appointed just mm. recently. Mm. So I still see, see that the president is breaking the ministries. It's okay. This one is blue economic mm. terminologies we've never heard before. Mm. So I see a certain, um, how do I put it, uh, willpower right. to do things a little differently. Mm. So I'm hoping that things will be done differently. But I hope his lieutenants will not fail right. him. If they didn't fail him in Lagos, they shouldn't fail him in Abuja. Right. Mm. And then the other thing I would recommend to the president is, Whenever the network news is on and you hear him say, please be patient. Yeah. Okay, some of us are actually beginning to also listen and say, okay, let's be patient. Yeah. Okay, we are being patient with you, sir. We want to see, my people say, a hunger that has hope does not kill. We want to know, okay, if we're patient now and we'll tie our belt, in the next one or two months, what are we expecting? Yeah. What I would recommend is that instead of sharing that money as palliatives, incidentally, two billion has gone to every state. One particular state here has added yeah. five billion to her own to share. Yeah. You're not going to, we're, we're done with campaign. And that you said about voting, we don't even have facts about who voted for me and who did not vote. We are done with the campaign. Can we move on? Mm. Now that we are moving on, please, can we tell the state governors? Because actually this work lies with the sub-nationals, states and the local government areas. Can we tell the governors, this is their single uh, account they do with local government where mm. it has been said, I don't mm. have any facts, mm. that some governors will give a percentage to the local government. As long as a local government chairman, who is the president of local government area for my grandmother, mm. does not do the roads, the mm. federal roads, and we cannot see evidence of performance there. We have a problem. Yeah. No, number two, NFIU, which the former president ensured to empower, to mm. monitor and track the money. Mm. Next one is CSOs, to monitor and see where this money is going. And then the president has to act presidential on this one. Mm. If anybody goes out of line and misuses any of this little money that we still have, mm. hit the person. All okay. right. As, that you, as you did say <laughs> earlier, uh, what cannot be measured exactly. uh, cannot be accounted for. But, but then again, uh, these are some of the conversations that will continue to inundate uh, the polity as the case has been for, for quite some time. We're going to have to leave it here. I was trying so hard to get uh, Dr. Bonner to finish on a very positive note. But then again, uh, there's really... That's positive enough, Sometimes it's a bit difficult. Okay, okay, just, 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 just give me one minute. I, I strongly... Uh, we, the average Nigerian, mm. let me appeal. Mm. Let me appeal. Mm. The average Nigerian, on a positive note, should face the reality that this subsidy has been removed and we may not go back to it. Mm. Labor should insist on engaging government. Government should please Lalong and the rest of mm. them in the Ministry of uh, should please sit down on the table and listen to Labor. And Labor should also open her spirit so that we'll find a way out of this woods. And mm. then the president, remember the box stops on your table, sir. Mm. I would appeal, call your ministers and tell them these are not normal times. And then every local government chairman, please I beg you, mm. even if you want to eat, at least do some work. Mm. Every government, if you want to eat, do some work. And then Reduce the number of eights you are appointed. Somebody is mm. made, given an appointment, and the very first thing he does is appoint 33 eights. Okay. Let's not go into all of that. Let us reduce cost of governance. Right. And to the extent that we do that, let us actually find out where the leakages are. Mm. Plot the leakages and then policies, right. sir. Mm. Policies, sir. <laughs> Thank go you. and do modular refineries, engage the heart of people so you can ask for their hands. Doctor, we positive. thank you very Doctor, much for uh, your input. We'll, we'll take that any day. <laughs> something, something in me wanted to prove that if you want to eat, and I, 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 I'm, no, I'm, I'm going to stop myself from time. asking that question. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Bueno, thank you so much uh, thank you very for your much. insight thank and you. for your very passionate analysis on this uh, particular conversation. We look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you so much thank for coming on the program. Coming. All right, uh, we're going to take a moment's break. When we do come back, coming up ahead in just a moment, we'll take you through the front pages of some select national dailies as we bring you up to speed with the stories making the headlines. Join us again.